worship at United Church in University Place. My name is Kathy Law, and I have the privilege of serving as the pastor of this congregation as we seek to build the beloved community through our inclusive welcome of all people. I want to check with you all this morning. I'm in our sanctuary, and I've got these headphones plugged into my computer. Are you able to hear? Okay, if you can, thumbs up. Good. Perfect. Thank you so much. Friends in Christ, God is love all the time and all the time. God is love. During this time of worship, I invite you to participate with your prayers and your presence. If you have prayers that you would like to share with this community of faith, I invite you to turn to the chat at the bottom of your screen. If you are worshiping on Facebook or YouTube, welcome to our virtual service. Uh, you're invited to place a comment there as well. And if you have a prayer you'd like to have us pray over, you can place them in the, the Facebook and the YouTube chats as well. As we come to the end of June, I want us to be mindful that June is considered Pride Month. And as an open and affirming and reconciling congregation, I want to take the opportunity to celebrate and affirm our LGBTQIA plus siblings. We are becoming known for being a place of welcome for all people at United Church, proclaiming a gospel of radical love and inclusivity. We are a people who are deeply concerned with the way of Jesus, and we are reclaiming Christianity from what it has become in the United States. We are a vibrant, inclusive, and progressive congregation that is committed to social justice and equality. We welcome all on this journey and encourage one another to make our lives count. In recent years, LGBTQIA plus community have come under renewed attack from both within and outside the Christian church. A couple of years ago, there was a debate about whether Mayor Pete could even call himself a Christian. And that demonstrates that there is still work to be done toward full acceptance of all people at every level of the church. So on this Pride Sunday, we take time to recommit to our mission of reaching into and beyond the LGBTQIA plus community. And it came to light this week, uh, two churches, uh, United Church of Christ and United Methodist Church um, has been in the news. The National UCC Church News reported that on June 24th, Long Island UCC became the target of a hate crime late Wednesday evening just days before the congregation um, was to celebrate pride, their rainbow flag was torn from the building. They also discovered that the um, flag was, um, they discovered the flag was missing and saw damage to the facade of the building. The pastor said, this is the second time the flag has been vandalized in the last month, but this time the damage was more significant. The U.S. flag that is flown about six feet away from the rainbow flag apparently was not touched. The purpose of the vandalism was to send a message to the church. And the pastor says, still, we are more resolute in our inclusive message. Once the damage is repaired, the flag will return. And then one of uh, my clergy colleagues, Reverend Jim Clark, appointed to Cedar Cross, in South Everett just put up this Facebook post this last week. We put up our banner for Pride Month and within a week it was sliced and vandalized. A couple days later, a young man stopped by the church telling us that he is a DJ and he was returning home from a wedding. He said he got a big tip and wanted to donate the money for us to replace the banner. Somehow word got out to the local neighborhood watch and more donations came in. One woman offered to sew it back together uh, Reverend Jim attempted to duct tape it back together, but it did not last. He says, not to worry, we ordered two more and we are confident the new one will last till the end of Pride Month. And King Five wanted a new story with that church, Cedar Cross um, in South Everett. Celebrating Pride gives us a unique opportunity to let our lives speak boldly about God's inclusive love for each one of us. So happy Pride Sunday. Let us gather to honor one another, to love one another, regardless of age, color, gender, gender identity, or sexual orientation. We are all created in the divine image of a loving, diverse God. 
We are also in the midst of a sermon and worship series as we read through the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Today, we encounter the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter 8, who asks, what is to keep me from being baptized? It was said of the early church, behold, how they love one another. May it continue to be said of us 2,000 years later. My friends, whoever you are and wherever you find yourself on this journey of life and on this journey of faith, know that you are welcome here, a place where you, where you will find a sense of connection, a place of belonging, and where you will be called beloved child of God. I now invite Tom and Allison to lead us in our land acknowledgement and candle lighting as we bring the light of Christ into our own homes. Good morning. These days, as we gather for worship, we pause to reflect that our church building rests and our lives are unfolding on the traditional homelands of the Puyallup people who have lived here for centuries and live here still as stewards of this place, sacred to them and to the creator. We do so as a way of taking one small step towards becoming true allies and we commit to truly listen to and uplift the voices and true histories of indigenous people here and throughout the world. Since ancient times, light and fire have reminded people of mystery and strength. The presence of light reminds us of Jesus coming into our world and into our lives. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. We are going to now bring light into our gathering for worship as each person is invited to light whatever candle or lamp that you have at home to celebrate light with us. All of our lights are one, and we gather for worship as we remember that God is with us wherever we are. You'll see the call to worship. Um, there it is. Um, please join with us. Come in on the bold. Uh, a call to worship this morning based on Isaiah chapter 56. Thus says the Lord. Maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance will be revealed. The, the Lord, Lord says, says, my house will be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Foreigners who would follow the Lord should not say, the Lord will surely separate me from his people. For the Lord says, the foreigners who join themselves to me I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. The, the Lord, Lord says, says, my house will be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Nor should the eunuch say, I am just a dry tree. For thus says the Lord to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths, who choose the things that please me and hold fast my covenant to them. I will create a name better than that of sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. The Lord says, my house will be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. The Lord says, my house will be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Now let us join together in the unison of prayer. Praise Creator God, God we give you thanks that the way of Jesus opened our eyes to the ways we exclude others and ourselves. Help us to live into the vision of Isaiah that is rediscovered in the early church, that all of us belong to you. We have always been and always will be beloved. Amen. 
Amen. Our opening hymn of praise is All Are Welcome, written by Marty Haugen. Today it is sung by AJ with accompaniment by Jeff and guitar and visuals by Don. Let us sing. <laughs> 